Hello and welcome to the demo on process management in OTRS. So here we'll start by understanding the basic terminologies used in process management in OTRS. Secondly, we'll take an example workflow and see how that can be converted to a process in OTRS. So the terminology used is as follows. First of all, there is activity. So activity is an interaction with an user. The user can be an internal employee from different departments or external users. Users must be valid users in OTRS. Example could be an approval or denial or a simple submit option for activity. Now within an activity, there is typically an activity dialog. An activity dialog is information exchange using form elements such as text box, radio buttons, pull down menus, etc. For example, if you want to collect the employee first name and last name, you would be using an activity dialog. Then there's a the concept of transitions. Transition is basically movement from one activity to another activity based on user input. For example, approval submit button. <coughs> one activity can have multiple transitions based on workflow logic. And also there is finally the concept of transition actions. These are basically tasks or actions which are affecting the OTRS backend depending on transition. For example, you could update a ticket, change agent of the ticket or send a notification based on a transition. Note that one transition action can be used across multiple transitions. Now what we do is take an example of a new employee hire. The first step is to create a new hire process template. So we would assume that there are three departments involved. There is a hiring manager who would request a new hire. He would send his request to the HR department. He would create an employee profile if the request is approved. If the request is not approved, the request process is cancelled. Otherwise, the process is forwarded to the IT department. The IT department can also approve the process and create an email ID. So this is the basic hiring process that we want to create in OTRS. <coughs> so before we do that, we need to prepare for OTRS. For each work step in the workflow, we need to prepare activity, activity dialog, transition flow, and finally transition actions. This must be done carefully to match the process workflow logic or else OTRS will behave differently from what you want from the process. So while preparing for the process, we identify that the hiring manager will request a new hire and submit the request. It goes to the HR department, which can do HR approve or HR deny. On HR approve, you create the employee profile. Then it goes to the IT department. The IT department can do IT approve or IT deny. On IT approve, you create an email ID and that is the end of the successful process. So once we did this, now let's break it down. Step one would be at the hiring manager level. This is the first activity. The hiring manager would initiate this activity by entering the first name, last name of the employee, name of the boss and the department and hit the submit button. This would be the activity dialog AD1. In the submit button, we would have transition T1. The transition T1 basically takes the user to the next activity, which is A2, and A2 is defined in the latest slide. Now, in this particular activity, what are the actions or the transition actions that are required? So, at the back end, there is TA1 where we move the ticket to HR queue. Then there is TA2 where we send a notification to HR manager. And finally, TA3 where we send notification to hiring manager. Now, let's move to the second activity, which is at the HR department. HR department can either approve or deny this particular process. If the HR department approves, then you enter the employee ID and the bank account number and then hit the submit button. This would be transition T2 where you go to the next activity A3. If HR denies, then you enter the reason for denial. Hit the submit button. This would be transition T3 where you go to the end of the process unsuccessfully. So now if you look at the transition actions, you will see TA4. If HR approve, move ticket to ITQ. You will see TA5, which are approved, send notification to IT manager. I deny, close ticket and successful. And TA7, if HR denies, send notification to hiring manager. Now we move to the third activity. Here again, IT department can approve or deny. If department approves, you have activity dialog 84, where they enter the email address and the password and hit the submit button. This would be transition T4, where we go to the end of the process. This is a successful end of the process. If IT denies, then there's a reason for denial. You enter the submit button. This will be transition T5, where you go to the end of the process, but this is an unsuccessful end of the process. So at the third activity, you will have different transition actions. 
There is TA8. If IT approves, close ticket successfully. TA9, if IT denies, close ticket and successful. And TA10, send notification to manager. So what we have done now is we have prepared the background work for OTRS in terms of activities, activity dialogue, transitions and transition actions. The next step is to log into OTRS and actually create this template, which we will do now. Okay, so we are going to log into OTRS. So this one is basically a development system where we will try to define the process that we just saw. Now before we get started we have to make sure that we have all the users, agents and groups created. So what we have done is at the back end we have already created some agents. So we have an agent for HR and IT. These are going to be used in the demo. We also need uh, groups. So we will have a group called IT agents and HR agents. Then uh, we will be using queues. So there are going to be queues for OCR support and IT support. The next step to do there is uh, also create dynamic fields. These dynamic fields will be used inside the uh, activity dialogues. So there is going to be a dynamic field for the first name. This is basically a text dynamic field. Likewise, there is going to be a last name and a boss and a department. These are all text dynamic fields. We also need a special dynamic field called the status, which has basically a drop down. And within the drop down, what we have done is we have entered some possible values. So there is a key called HR department with the value HR department, then HR deny and approve. This will be used to control the transitions between the different dialogues and the activities. So I'll talk about that when we get to the process management definition. Let's go back to the admin now. So we'll start creating the process. Let's look at process management. And here's where we create a new process. Let's call it new employee hire. So let's save that. Within this process, you just need to create the remaining elements. So the first place to start looking at is your activity dialog. So let's create an activity dialog. And this is record employee profile. And this will be visible to both the agent and the customer. This will be used by the hiring manager. And here you will notice that you have the dynamic fields available. These dynamic fields were created by us earlier. So we'll use that to populate the activity dialog. So let's start with first name. The first. And there's a show option. So this field is visible. Okay, then we'll use the last name. Save, go with boss and department. And there will be also be the status button. Now this status is the same dynamic field we created for controlling transitions but now this will be hidden so we say do not show field and the default value in this case will be HR department. Let's save that. So you can reorder the fields first name, last name, boss and then the department. So let's submit this. You have an active dialog now which will record the employee profile. We need to create a transition. So this is for moving from one uh, activity, which is the first activity, to the next one. So this is submit to 
HR. So here we're going to use the dynamic field, dynamic field status. On the value will be equal to the condition which will trigger this transition. So this is useful for controlling transitions to different activities based on your workflow logic. So just submit that. So you have a transition for submit to HR. We also need to create the actions for this transition. So there are going to be one action for moving to the HR queue. So here there's a ticket queue set where the queue is going to be HR support which we created earlier. Then we also create a new transition where we will assign HR agent to look at this ticket. So this is going to be responsible HR. Okay. So once we do that, uh, we are almost done. We, there's one extra step to do, which is create the next activity. So the first activity is recording employee detail. And here the corresponding dialog used will be the, the first dialog created. We'll also create the second activity, which is HR department. We are going to leave this we are going to leave this activity blank for the time being for the purpose of shortness of the demo. But now we will create the flowchart using the graphical interface. So the first step is you just pull up your activity for recording employee details, then also the next activity which is create a chat profile then look at uh, transitions so this is submit a chat transition drop into the next uh, flow okay so now here you notice that the first activity already has a uh, activity dialog which says record employee profile and then there is a submit to hr transition now within this you also need to edit and make sure that you are entering the transition actions inside this transition. So let's move the chart queue and submit. So when you do that, you will look at this and you can also use this button see to see what's inside. There's another way to look at this transition and that is looking at this particular menu. So this just shows what the transition is. However, we need to create the transition action here. So let's make sure that we are editing that. And this is where you enter the transition actions. So we have two actions which are entered, which we created. So just submit that. And you are done with half the process. So this is the basic logic on how you start creating the activities and assigning activity dialogues, then transitions and finally transition actions. So you need to repeat the same step for the rest of the process. And what we have done is we have pretty much completed the process here in this server. And if you look at the process here, this is the new employee process. And finally, this is how it all looks like. So you have all the three activities, you have the actions, you have the transitions all defined here. So you use that while creating this process workflow using the diagram. You can double click to edit any of these, but essentially you have not built the basic workflow logic that is required. So once you're done, you should say save and finish. And you can now start using that process as a new process ticket. So what you're going to do now is 
assume that this process is done and defined and it's ready to use so let's look at the agents and assume that we have a hiring manager who wants to use this process so let's switch to the agent which is basically the hiring manager he's going to create a new ticket now which will be the new process ticket and the process that is going to use this new employee hire so this dialog box shows up now as we defined and also notice on the right hand side it gives you process information so let's create that as a first name that will be the last name department is uh, design and is the name of the boss so once you hit the submit button this will trigger the new process ticket it actually creates a new ticket and then it looks at all the transitions actions we have defined and accordingly it will process the next steps of the workflow logic so in this case this ticket is going to be moved to the HR queue it's going to be assigned to an HR agent and there will also be a notification being sent please note that the notifications have to be sent using the uh, different logic behind it which is basically the general purpose uh, event based queue event based uh, notification so once we do that you will see an email being received by the HR agent and here you can click on this link to come back and see what needs to be done here so what we are going to do here is just log out and log back in as the HR manager or the HR agent so once you log that in you are going to see the new ticket which was filed and here on the right hand side it shows the process information it also shows the current owner and the responsible agent which is the HR support agent so we are now the HR support agent there are two options for HR approve and deny so let's click on HR approve brings up the next active dialog so employee ID would be and the bank account could be once this is done you have now approved the process this will now move to the IT department which is the next activity so let's uh, see how that shows up here it's taking a while so now it has moved to the next queue which is the IT help desk queue now let's log off and see what happens to the email notification so here there is a notification sent to the IT team and they get a link which they can follow to come back to the OTRS tool and log in. Once they log in they will see this particular process ticket here and now they have two options so they can either approve or deny. Also note that at the same time on the right hand side it shows you the latest information of the process summary. So here the IT will approve in that case they are going to enter the email ID and submit so once the submission is done that basically means the entire process has been approved by both the HR department and the IT department you are now successfully complete on the process so the ticket will now say close successfully and the process is now complete so this finishes up the entire demo hope that this uh, demo was very useful to you if you have any questions or some more clarifications around this demo please do contact us at our website www.altnix.com thank you